Now, if you press space and play back the animation, you will see this works nicely, but it kind of keeps like. Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to create this very stylized living room icon, you know, something that could be used in apps or websites. And I really hope you will enjoy this one. And if you do, please don't forget to leave that like. And if you're new around here and you want to learn in the fastest way, be sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration and textured environments. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all let's delete the cube and the light so drag a selection press x and choose delete we'll leave the camera in place and now let's press shift a and we'll start mesh and plane now tap into the edit mode and let's scale this up so i'll press s and then four to scale this four times up and now let's press ctrl r and create few loop cuts um let's increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel to something like four. I think that should be enough for very small scale stylized illustration. And now let's press two for edge select, or you can choose it right here. And now let's select this edge, hold shift and select these other ones. And we'll press V to kind of rip this apart, but then click right mouse button to leave it in place. And now press A to select all and extrude towards the bottom, just like that. And now let's make it more chunky so i'll press g then z and move it down a little bit and now just to be safe press a and shift n to recalculate the normals and now if you go modifiers and let's add modifier and let's go generate and bevel and we'll increase the segments to two and you can see how these are separated because we you know ripped those faces apart and now let's play with the amount a little bit we can make it look more chunky so we could do with more segments as well and now we can tab out let's go to shading let's enable harden normals and right click and shade auto smooth and now in shade smooth we'll increase this to 180 degrees so this will serve as our very stylized floor and now tab into the edit mode press 3 for face select or you can choose it right here again and now select some of these faces and press G then X and move them around. So we give some variation to this and also make the design a little bit more like circular, not so rigid. So let's enable X-ray view here, select these faces and move them around a bit like this. Okay, now tab out and let's create a sofa. Of course, for this kind of stylized, very small scale icon, um, the full scale sofa would be too much. Let's disable the X-ray view. So we'll kind of create only the visual representation of that. So let's press Shift A and we'll add a plane. Now tap into the edit mode, press S to scale it up. Something like this should be enough. And then press E to extrude. Now let's press Ctrl R and create two cuts. So increase number with the mouse wheel, left click and right click to release in place and then press S then Y to scale these on Y axis just like that and now let's press Ctrl R and create one loop cut here in the back just like that and now we can probably scale all of this a little bit on the Y axis so let's press A S then Y and scale it up just like this and now you can hold alt to select this loop again and alt and shift to add to the selection and press s then y and scale these apart a little bit like this and now press 3 for face select again hold shift and select these faces and press e to extrude like this and now we'll select these in the back so hold shift and select these and extrude Okay, something like this. And now we can add some subdivision surface modifier. So let's click add modifier and generate and subdivision surface. And let's add two levels of subdivision. We'll probably need to go to something like three even. So let's add it up. And now we'll only need to add some supporting loops. So let's press Ctrl R, create a loop right here and slide it towards the front right here. And you will see how this sharpens. So we'll do the same here on the inside like this and then here in the back now you can control the smoothness of this based on how close you're going with the loop so something like this should be enough and then we can create one here in the middle 
And now let's press Ctrl R and let's add one more down here to make it more sharper. And here this is too stretched, so let's press Ctrl R again and place one more and slide it down just a tiny bit. Okay, looks nice. And I really like how this curves down here, so I think probably that'll be okay. So yeah, this should work as a base shape. So now let's press 3 for face select, click here and now hold Ctrl and Shift and select this one, that will select the whole patch. Now let's press Shift D to duplicate this, right click to release in place, and we'll press P and separate this selection and that will create a new object right here. So tab out, select that new object, tap into the edit mode and we can press A to select all and just E to extrude and we'll create this very stylized cushion like that and now let's click here hold control click to the other side press g then x and push it outside a little bit now i think this will work nicely as a stylized sofa so tab out and we can select both by holding shift right click shade smooth and then press ctrl p and parent so they're linked together and now we can scale them up down and move them around so let's place it somewhere here and now here I want to create like a lamp, so shift right click to move the cursor there. Let's press shift A and we'll add a plane. Tap into the edit mode, scale this down and press E to extrude. And now I to inset like this and press G then Z to move it up and then E to extrude. And now let's step out and let's go ahead and add some bubble modifier here as well. And here we'll need to kind of tackle this geometry right here. So first of all, in the geometry, we'll switch this to arc and then reduce the amount, of course, and add some more segments. And again, we'll, in the shading, enable hard normals, right click and shade auto smooth. So this will create this nice smooth shape. And now let's press shift A and we'll go for cylinder. And now tap into the edit mode, let's make it smaller, something like this. Let's look from the front and press G then Z and move it up somewhere here towards the middle and then press S then Z and scale the whole thing up like this and move it even higher. So press G then Z and move it higher. Now we'll select the bottom face, hold shift and select the top face, press X and delete those. And let's add generate and solidify modifier. And let's increase the thickness here. And of course we can tap out, right click and shade auto smooth and reduce this to something like 30 degrees, hold shift and parent the whole thing right there. And then, you know, move things around a little bit. And now something like a stylized coffee table. So shift right click here. And I want to go like a little bit modern style here. So let's press shift A and we'll add a plane tap into the edit mode, press S, then Y, scale it up. And now, so we don't have to do like a bunch of cleanup later, let's go press 2 for edge select, select this edge on the side, hold shift, select the other one, press E then Z and extrude it up like this, and then just press F to fill. And now hold Ctrl and Alt and click on this edge, that will select these perpendicular edges all around your shape, and press Ctrl B to bevel. And let's create the bevel like this and we can increase number of cuts with the mouse wheel. So something like this should be nice. Now press A to select all and Alt E and extrude faces along normals and let's go inside. And now again just to be safe press A and Shift N to recalculate the normals. And now we can tab out and basically just transfer the modifier. So hold Shift, select this bottom part of the lamp and just click here and copy to select it. Now here we can right click and shade auto smooth and again go 180 degrees. And we have this nice like a modern coffee table here. And now to add a little bit more detail, it will be nice to add like a blanket. So shift right click here and we'll press shift A and add a plane. Tap into the edit mode, press S to scale it up. And now right click subdivide and let's press shift r several times to repeat that operation to create really like detailed subdivided plane like this and now press e to extrude it once really thin like this press g then x to move it so it doesn't overlap here and place it a little bit higher now we can rotate this a little bit and place it somewhere here 
And now we'll use the cloth simulation. So go to the simulation tab here, physics, and let's enable cloth. And we'll go ahead and enable pressure. Um, that will kind of keep this fluffy and make it so it doesn't like collapse into itself. So let's keep the pressure to something like 0.1. And let's enable self collisions as well. And now let's select the couch here and we'll add collision. And same for this. Now, if you press space and play back the animation, you will see this works nicely, but it kind of keeps sliding. So we'll need to go ahead and increase friction a little bit. So let's try it here, something like 20. Let's play it back and you can see it doesn't slide so much anymore. So we can play with this value and of course give some friction to the cushion as well. And now basically this kind of holds in place a little bit better. And we can just press the spacebar to stop the animation wherever we think this looks okay. And now just select the cloth and we'll go into the modifiers tab and apply. And you can apply as a shape key if you want to go back, you know, later um, and maybe make different simulations. So let's apply a shape key. And now you of course need to go to the data and switch and increase that cloth shape key to one. And basically now in the modifiers, you can add subdivision surface to make this nice and smooth, increase levels to two, right click and shade smooth. And now you have a nice blanket here, kind of just resting on the sofa there. And to make this look a little bit better, let's shift right click here and let's press shift A and we'll add a plane, tap into the edit mode, let's make it smaller press S then X to scale it on X axis. And now let's press Ctrl B and then V to kind of enable vertex bevel. Now you can increase and reduce the cuts with the mouse wheel. So let's give this like two, press A and extrude. So let's create it like a really stylized remote control tab out. And again, we'll transfer some modifier. So hold shift, select this and transfer that modifier select the remote again right click and shade auto smooth and now we'll create some buttons here so tap into the edit mode hold shift s and snap cursor to select it so it sits on top and now we can tab out and let's press shift a and we'll add another plane tab into the edit mode and let's scale it down okay something like this and then s then x and scale it up and now we can press ctrl r and create two cuts here and then one cut right here and if these are not square, you can always you can always select all, press S then X and scale them back down. And now press Ctrl B to create the bevel, but reduce the cuts to only one. And let's create some space between them. Press X and delete those. And now we can just press A and extrude all of those. Now press one for vertex select and Ctrl I to invert the selection and press X and delete faces. So now if you tab out and add the bevel modifier, they'll be nice and rounded but only on top. So let's reduce the amount, increase the number of segments and create something like this. Right click shade auto smooth and looks nicely. So press G then X, move it towards the front and maybe they're too high. So we can always enable X-ray view and in the edit mode, select top birds, press G then Z and move them down just like this. And now of course, let's hold shift parent this or you can just join it. You can press Ctrl and J to join those and they will behave as one object. So you can press R, Z and rotate and move it around to find some better position, maybe scale it up because this is really like a stylized thing. Okay, and maybe this is too high here. So let's bring this down so it doesn't peek out too much. And let's hit zero on an ampad to go to camera, select the camera, press G and then Z twice to go outside a little bit and then you can press n for the side panel and in the view settings enable lock camera to view so now you can use your viewport controls to position this a little bit better something like this should work okay don't forget to disable it so you can freely move around then and press g then x and move this to the side again like this now basically it's only about composition to find some nice representation of what we want to show here and let's hold shift s reset cursor to world origin and let's press shift a and we'll add a plane this will serve as a background so tab in and let's just make it larger 
Now let's look from the front, tie about and press G then Z and move it down to place it under the floor here. Now let's hit zero again. And in the output tab, I will reduce the resolution to something like 1600 to 1200. And now we can bring it a little bit closer like this. And then in the render settings, let's go ahead, switch to cycles. I will go for GPU and enable some the noising for the viewport and reduce samples here to something like 512. Same for the viewport. Press Ctrl B to limit the preview only to camera bounds. Hold Z and preview rendered. So this is what we have here. Of course, only a little bit of ambient occlusion, not much light. So let's press Shift A and we'll go ahead and create area light. Press G then Z and move it up. Let's make it larger, maybe quite large. I want nice and soft shadows. And in the light settings, let's increase power to something like 250, maybe even more, maybe like 500. And let's play with the position. So it can be like closer a little bit. And maybe let's go for 1K here. And we can bring this higher up. And then you can, of course, play with the position like this to find some better shadows. But all in all, this should work nicely for very stylized look. Now let's select the wooden floor and let's create some material here. So I will just grab this to create a new window and let's switch to shader editor. Let's press N to hide the side panel. And now we can create a new material here. And let's call this wood. And now here we can create like a procedural wave texture. So let's press shift A, go texture and create a wave texture. Now to preview this easiest way to use is Node Wrangler. So go edit preferences, add-ons, search for node and enable Node Wrangler right here. Just check the box. And now if you hold control and shift and select the texture, it will plug right to your surface preview. So you will see what your texture does real time in the viewport. So now let's increase a little bit of the distortion and detail scale just a tiny bit like this and we can of course play with the scale and of course i want to rotate this a little bit so let's go ahead and press ctrl t while this is selected this is another node wrangler shortcut and now we can just rotate this uh, but we need to find the right axis so it's z of course now let's press shift a and we'll go converter and color ramp and plug it right here now let's bring the blacks towards the front and whites as well so we have this nice really sharp gradient there or you can go other way around whatever suits you and now when this is done let's move it to the side and let's press shift a and we'll go color and let's choose mix color and plug it right here but make sure it's plugged into the factor and now we can just select some wooden color like this. Or let's do that for the underlying color. I think that'll be better. Okay, maybe a little bit desaturated. And now I'll press Ctrl C hovering over this Ctrl V to plug it here. And here just make it a little bit brighter. Just like that. And now let's just hold Ctrl and Shift and select the principal. So we are back into the original connection and just plug the color right here so we have nice procedural cartoonish texture there now let's select the lamp here and create a metal texture so let's call this metal and basically we'll just increase the metallic value and play with the color so it can be like bronze color or something like this and i think i'm done with the procedural texture so let's just collapse this and let's play with this now let's select the shade create a new material here and i want to go with transmission there and increase the roughness and now let's hold shift s snap cursor to select it let's press shift a and we'll add a light and press g then z and move it up um, but make sure it's not inside um, the middle part right there because it will be obscured so move it to the side a little bit and now you can see the dot there and so you can increase the power to something stronger and of course color 
the light and it will create a nice effect and of course you can press g then z move it up and down and you can also press alt d then z to create the additional one and now since you used alt and d um, these are linked so whatever you do to one uh, it will affect the other as well so let's create something like this here like that and now again i will just copy and increase the brightness here okay i really like this and now some nice accent color for the sofa so that will be like bright orange for example or you know whatever you like basically can be like a nice green color i really like this and increase the roughness now let's do the same color here and for the blanket we can find something nice and contrasting like violet and increase the roughness as well though it doesn't need to be so high and since this should be like a cloth we can go ahead and increase the sheen we'll create and add a nice touch and yeah let's select the background create the background material let's go something like this maybe a little bit darker and now we can collapse this let's look from the camera and now let's create some nice backlight here so let's select this area light look from the top by pressing 7 on an ampad press shift d and move it back now press g then z and move it down and of course i want to switch this to disc and bring it closer and scale it down so we only creating like this really strong light in the back let's increase to 2000 and play with the color here as well something like this and now select the background and let's go with the roughness a little bit and now in the world settings we can go ahead increase the brightness of the world and play with the color so we kind of blend all of these colors together a little bit better like this and now maybe this light here can be a little bit warmer and sharper okay and maybe let's duplicate it a little bit like this only 500 so we have some ambient light from the side as well and bring it down they'll bring up some of these wrinkles and now i think this is too glossy here so let's increase the roughness on the wooden materials as well and i think um, i will go with more subtle change there so maybe bring up the bottom one a tiny bit so it's not so contrasty there and same for this one so you can just expand this you don't need to go back to the shader editor and uh, you can do it right here and make it more subtle and now let's look at the background maybe we can find more contrasty color here maybe something brighter okay something like this yeah something like a bright blue might work a little bit better here okay and for the point lights inside um let's increase the radius so they don't throw so hard shadows on the floor there and now let's play with the position of this a little bit more and finally we can go ahead and in the render settings scroll down and here we can increase the exposure a little bit and choose like a high contrast setting but probably um, the light is too harsh here so let's bring it up and for this i will go something softer and for these point lights let's maybe find something more neutral not so warm um, but all in all i think i like this so yeah now this is all about like your taste um setting the colors and the color for these lights and you know finding the right setup for this and then later of course you can just turn this background into shadow catcher um right here in the visibility settings and then in the render settings you can enable a transparent background so basically you can render this out as a transparent png 
and you know place it wherever you want in your designs or you know for your clients so that's it for today's tutorial i really hope you enjoyed this one and if you did again please leave that like and if you're new around here hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day Bye.